This is a Bitcoin mine hidden deep in the mountains of Sichuan in China. And its rival is on the other side of the planet, at a former factory that used to make denim for Levi's. You see the transformers lined up on the outside. We have a lot of megawatts. These two miners make money by providing the massive computing power that's required to process and record a high volume of cryptocurrency transactions. Business was soaring as Bitcoin hit new highs in early 2021. It's hard to sleep. You go to bed at night and you wake up and you look and you go, holy crap, it's still up. Last year, China controlled 70 percent of the global processing power that runs the Bitcoin network. And that means the majority of the cryptocurrency's global transactions are routed through these computers in China and recorded by miners here. So a group of U.S. miners is raising hundreds of millions of dollars to win a larger share of Bitcoin's processing power. When capitalism in the state decides it wants to get into a market and get into an industry, it moves heavy capital there. They say their work is also meant to protect Bitcoin. Industry insiders say the Chinese government has already cracked down on some crypto entrepreneurs and could potentially disrupt global trading by asking miners in China to block certain users from making transactions. It's better for cryptocurrency to be spread around the globe. So that Bitcoin cannot be manipulated by any single government. I think there will be competition. It's more and more human resources, technology resources that are put into this particular new segment. The battle over Bitcoin mining will decide who controls the infrastructure that powers the cryptocurrency. Yu Longliu started mining during the previous Bitcoin rally in 2017. And this is one of the sites he works with that has mined about 8,000 Bitcoins over the past three years, generating about $28 million in revenue over that time period. Miners need cheap electricity, which is abundant in some parts of China, thanks to dams and coal power plants that were built by the state in the past decade. That electricity then powers fast machines that are necessary to solve mathematical problems in order to eventually mint new coins. China is home to the vast majority of mining equipment production, and so miners like Liu always have speedy access to the best technology, like this cooling system. But the industry in China lives with uncertainty. Liu asked to keep the location of the site a secret because he says he's not sure if the government will crack down one day. While mining itself isn't illegal, virtual currency trading and crypto exchanges are banned in China because they're seen as risky to the country's financial system. In the past few months, Bitcoin industry insiders have said that Beijing accused some Chinese miners of money laundering and froze their credit cards, making it difficult for miners to pay operating costs. The Chinese government did not respond to a request for comment. So to help miners develop their business despite the risks, Liu offers loans so miners don't need to go through Chinese banks. His company, Bobble Finance, lends cryptocurrencies to about 300 miners, including the owners of this site. So that they can purchase more equipment at a lower cost, and then maintaining the machine itself, including repairs. And Chinese miners are now facing growing competition from overseas. In the United States, we have massive infrastructure, power infrastructure and building infrastructure that's already been built out, and we can convert facilities into large data mining facilities. Russell Can is an American miner who scouts the U.S. for abandoned factories and converts them into mining facilities. His goal? Raise cash to develop industrial-scale mining in the U.S., where until a few years ago, most miners ran small DIY operations. This is my housing for my computers so that uh, the heat is vented outside. So Core Scientific has built a team with former executives from Microsoft and MySpace and put together an ambitious business plan. We have Ernst & Young audited financials. We have a strong balance sheet. We check a lot of boxes for institutional investors that a Chinese miner does not check. The strategy worked. In the past two years, the company has raised $95 million and secured a $20 million loan to install mining rigs and facilities, including a former denim factory in North Carolina and a former carpet factory in Georgia. 
Core Scientific's power infrastructure can handle the latest mining equipment, which CAN says usually consumes approximately 100 megawatt hours of electricity to mine one Bitcoin. That's the same amount of electricity used to watch television continuously for about 98 years. And tunnels that were once used to cool the factory are now being used to keep chips from overheating. We've got the ability to process 200,000 gallons of chilled water through these pipes to keep the temperature in the building down. Can hopes all this will help him offset a long-running technological disadvantage. He was usually about four months behind his Chinese rivals when it came to accessing the latest rigs, and the price tag was sometimes 50% more expensive. Others are using the same playbook as Can, creating corporations that attract the support of institutional investors who then help fund high-tech mining sites. Industry insiders and academics who study mining say that the U.S. efforts can be good for the future of the cryptocurrency because the original goal of Bitcoin was to create a currency that couldn't be controlled by one entity. The dream was that we would reimagine finance without gatekeepers. And what did we get after 11 years? We got different kind of intermediaries, now mostly nameless, mostly under the covers in China. Emin Gun Sire runs a blockchain startup and is also an associate professor at Cornell University. He studies the vulnerabilities of cryptocurrencies and says Beijing might intervene in the market. This is an enormous issue. These and miners, they could receive injunctions that compels them to act in a certain way. One request, he says, could be to ask miners to exclude certain people who want to spend or accept bitcoins in the network, essentially blocking transactions. This is what Bitcoin academics call censorship, similar to how content and accounts can be blocked on social media platforms in China. The Chinese government would say that the money at certain addresses must not move, and it compels the Chinese miners to not include certain transactions so they can selectively censor certain users of a blockchain. The Chinese government did not respond to a request for comment. Bobble Finance says if miners in China are asked by the government to intervene in the network, they would have to comply. But that would slow down their operations and eventually diminish their global processing power. But U.S. miners aren't immune to facing scrutiny from financial regulators at home that have proposed plans to hold the industry to the same standards, followed by traditional financial institutions. The more immediate resistance to U.S. miners could come from local communities concerned about the environmental impact of Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin mining consumes enormous amounts of energy. So all energy that goes to miners is energy that's being directed away from other more useful uses. Can says nearly half of the electricity used by Core Scientific comes from carbon-free sources. Because China's miners aren't part of a corporate structure like in the U.S., Liu says that they can operate faster and spend less on operating costs. If you multiply the operational costs, China still has an advantage. China will be on the front of the curve into the future. 2021 is all about expansion. and We've built infrastructure, we've built the software, we've built the team to be a long-term player in this market.